the canvas ahead of time or just right on raw canvas? Um, I'm talking about many years ago. Mm. I think it was mostly raw. And once in a while, if I use some gesso, I might have thinned it down too. And then mm. the paint would adhere, you know, more sure. rather than being loose. But, you know, I, I sort of experimented a lot in different um, ways with it. I'll bet you could use something like um, Golden's High Flow Acrylics. They're very thin. Hmm. I think that yeah, those would probably. You work. still have to dilute them for the most part. Mm. Now back, back in the um, yeah yeah flow in, in her first really successful years, she would do most of them diluted, and you have to think about the gesso if she ever used it. Um, had to be of a, probably just a very, very specific type. Like we have clear gesso we can use now, mm -hmm. all of us, and buy that. Yeah. And that would be superb yeah. for this, as long as it still adheres in the way that you want to the canvas. However, the canvas that I've seen of hers was much higher quality than most of us can afford to use nowadays. Much heavier weight and it's a commercial right. canvas and very tightly woven. Mm -hmm. So that holds the paint very much different. Di very differently even from oil to acrylic how it held it because it was so tightly woven. Even if you were able, if you had a whole bunch of assistants and to pick those canvases up when wet, they would probably not even seep through the back because they were so beautifully woven. Yeah, I was just thinking of that. Putting cardboard down is what I've had to do when I've worked big on the floor. You know, so, so let me throw it out to, to the rest of the group here. What what are some of the other things you, you got from the uh, either the discussion here or the, the videos we saw? Anybody? Well, I, this is Terry. Um, I always enjoy watching people paint, uh, but her work is so large and looks like free flowing. And then she's there with her ruler and her thumb making very specific marks. And uh, mm -hmm. that, that was good to see. Yeah. She's also, there's another video out. I'm going to send a list of these resources out to everybody that because I went out searching for everything and anything. And the only thing you won't get is the link to the interview with Charlie Rose for obvious reasons. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> uh, poor Charlie. Um, but she she did a lot of print yeah. and there's a um, there's a video that's at uh, it's out of uh, it's the Australian gallery that had that posted it, but it shows her working with um, these these printers and doing printmaking and they're very small works, and but they're still they still have the same feel as the large, you know, the huge pieces. Uh, and, I, and I never knew that she did that kind of printmaking. And, and it's, it was really interesting to see. Anybody else? I think else? some of those you're speaking of are silk screens. Yes. Yeah, they are, I think. I think you're right, Joe, because there's a huge, there's, it was a huge press that was printing these. And it looked to me like it might've been silk screening. Yeah. Yeah, not if this isn't like the typical wood block print make. No, it wasn't that at all. It was more of a silk screen process. Mm -hmm. But they were small pieces, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Anybody else? I know, Cassie, you do some work that's very similar because you do a lot of pouring in your stuff. Uh, like, yeah, I work a lot on unprimed canvas on the large canvas on the floor, like she does. Mm -hmm. But I'm working with house paint, acrylic latex, mm -hmm. and I don't thin it out. It does tend to soak in to the canvas. Oh, okay. I wondered about that because, you know, you, you see how, how thick and, and obviously acrylic and, you know, it has a plastic base to it. Oh, right. I, I wonder how it would sink, you know, actually sink into a, a piece of canvas, but that's interesting to see that it actually does. Yeah, I kind of, I use that to my advantage. Like what I like to do first before I start a piece is I'll take the raw canvas and scrunch it up and cram it into a bucket. And I take mm -hmm. some 
I take some thinned paint, you know, house paint, and I pour it over and I quickly pull it out. So some areas pick up the paint and some areas don't because it's scrunched up tight in this bucket. Mm -hmm. Then I lay it out and let it dry. it. And what happens is it, um, you know, it's an interesting pattern to begin with. You know, you've got the, the areas with paint, the areas without, but also the canvas gets wrinkled and that gives you, it keeps those wrinkles and that gives you a really nice texture for the finished piece. Interesting. Yeah. If you That's go random. Cassie I wanted to ask, is that your piece behind you, a painting of yours behind you? Yeah, um, this one is done with rebar on unprimed canvas that gives, rebar gives these really interesting rust marks. Mm. And then it was dyed on top of that with logwood. And because the rebar is iron, the logwood turns very black. You know, you get a lot of black whenever you use iron. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I've seen some of Cassie's work. It's phenomenal. She does some amazing, amazing pieces for sure. Oh. So it's like a tie dye you. technique. Yeah, it's um, Japanese shibori, which mm -hmm. is basically tie dye. Hmm. What's the medium? What's that, Re Michelle? Rebar. The, the re yeah, I was wondering what medium you use. Is it a water base or oil base or? The, the one behind me? Yeah. It's rebar, it's rust and yeah. natural dye. Right, but I mean, what is the wet substance? Is it oil base or is it a water base? It's, ru it's rust marks on wet canvas. Wet with what? Wet with water or wet with? I, I, yeah, I wet the canvas with water. Oh, okay, that's what I mean. And, and a little bit of vinegar because it allows the rebar to rust more quickly. Oh, you know, the, 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 uh, the acid of the vinegar. So the canvas is wet. Mm -hmm. I place the rebar rods on it. I roll them up and then I cover it with plastic, you know, to keep it moist. And I let it sit for about two or three days. And I do that several times, like I'll do it in different directions, you know, first one direction, mm -hmm. then another. And sometimes I fold the canvas, you know, before I put the rebar down and it just, it just gives really interesting patterns. Oh, it's, yeah, it's really cool. That's what yeah. I doing. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm always fascinated by artist processes. I mean, that, that just, that's my thing. It's like, mm -hmm. Watch, just watching Frankenthal work and going, oh, look now, look how she does, you know, that I just, it's like last month when we would, we had, we were doing Gerhard Richter and his process, you know, scraping paint across huge canvases. I mean, and having him speak to it, that, that always fascinates me. That always fascinates me. In fact, it's funny, I just read today that um, he's 88, as an aside, Gerhard Richter's 88, and He's just finished a huge stained glass for the, and for the Cologne Cathedral in Germany. And there's a, there's a picture of it. It's just, it's just phenomenal work. He took his, he worked with a, with a, a glass, a, you know, stained glass company to do it, but it looks just phenomenal. I've worked with murals quite a bit and murals. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the paintings that I do that are, you know, some of the ones that seem large, they're, they're like my maquette, you know, I'm making a mock-up for what I'm going to do, you know, to show. And um, that's given me a lot of freedom because every, every time I'd start a mural, I'd kind of take on another challenge for the style, um, you know, and the clients always knew that I was going to experiment with it. And um, we're pretty happy, happy to do that. So. And hey, Michelle, you put, you've painted on some large pieces. I've some seen pretty, some yeah. work, yeah. Yeah, like mm -hmm. 20 by 40. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty good sized walls. But when they're pieces of art, you know, they're more, you know, five by seven or something like that. Personally, I mean, actually, Jill taught us this, that it is actually easier to paint big than it is small. You know, and I, and I think that's true. And I, I prefer painting large. I, I've, the stuff I have now, I've, I've got a few small pieces, but I'm trying to get out to like 30 by 40s and, and, and larger. Yeah, they're fun. Like, they I, I look at it that um, I feel immersed, 
you know, mm -hmm. that as a way, um, Stuart, you were talking about how do you keep, you know, do you focus on one area? Do you get lost in the whole thing? And I, when I do something that's large, I feel immersed in an environment, you know, so it's really, the, in fact, when I was, a, when I was in school, I did uh, these big pieces that were, you know, five or, well, they were like six feet tall by eight wide or something. And then I would, I would create a, a tube, take it off the canvas and create a tube. And then people would get inside it because it was, it was literally an environment. And, and the feel of it. So, mm -hmm. you know, seeing things, because then your peripheral vision, I guess that's the other thing about painting large is that your the peripheral vision of uh, is also involved mm -hmm. you know if you're standing way back to get the whole thing you may as well look at a little thing but if you're going to do a big painting you know you may as well kind of use the periphery and how your vision is affected by by that it's you know i know when i when i'm painting on a larger piece so for me a larger piece is anything that's bigger than like 24 by 24 and up okay I'll use pretty paintbrushes from Lowe's. I just and I use and I just like the idea of working from my shoulder, you know, and, and sweeping across the canvas rather than, you know, using your wrist or your elbow to just get all of this little oh, tiny yeah. detail stuff. It's I just really get, much, get into the whole thing. Oh yeah. I mean you can put your whole body you into get the a whole present. rhythm going. Exactly. Exactly. And that just yeah Helen was talking about getting into the whole environment of it and it's like mm -hmm. a dance you're you're creating a whole place mm -hmm. of being as you're painting you're in it and I think that's why she liked being on the floor because you're kind of dancing and it's, it's uh, and that whole experience of creating mm -hmm. yeah fun. I used to have something called my worst best brush or my best worst brush I guess you know, I mean, things that, you know when you really crap them out and you, but they're just the perfect they've got the perfect bristle now for what you're looking for you know it's not always just a smooth thing you know uh -huh. yeah. keep that in mind i know some of you have <clears throat> heard this before but when you go to 99 cent stars they have some of the best brushes in there meant for house painting and I, mm -hmm. I swear you can get four of them for under $5. It's just amazing. And then if you ruin them for some reason, it's not a tragedy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So that makes you even more carefree and, and enjoying the whole experience. Right. And I like getting my hands into it too sometimes, you know. Although I used to do that... Um, I'm doing a heavy metal cleanse because I, I used to do get my hands involved and it was oil. So some of those things I got my hands into, oh, and then yeah. painting that was just stupid young kid, you know. Just, <laughs> yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. if I needed to make a certain mark I, and my hand was available, then I went ahead. And, you know. um, this is Terry, and I used to paint um, twenty by twenty or around then, uh -huh. um, but then. I ran out of room <laughs> and I'm not that, oh, I haven't been painting that long. So I've been doing a lot of 12 by 12s, but I mean, uh, the amount of paint I use is minuscule. And mm -hmm. then I think of going back to very large pieces and I've got these little golden bottles, you know, or, <laughs> or little <laughs> tubes. And it's like, oh no, how do I <laughs> get all that in a bucket? Um, I have to, uh, you have to look differently at your paint supplies and. You do, yeah. I, I just can't imagine squeezing everything I own into a bucket. I'm, well, maybe I can, but wow. That's what those mediums are all about. Yeah. <laughs> and you get the extenders and, you know, I've, I've always marveled, like when I was doing murals, um, how little amount of paint could go so far. Or I'd, I'd squeeze out something the size of a quarter and smish it around with some medium to to get it to be the consistency that I wanted. And it's surprising how far it, it does. It's, yeah, you, well, not if you're going to be pens. <laughs> kind of depends, I guess. And if you, if, like if, you, if you're painting acrylic and you're using like, like say Golden's fluid and wine, which is very thin to begin with, and you, <laughs> you, it's easy to thin that out and, and get, it'll, it'll take you quite a ways. 
because that's heavily pigmented. Mm -hmm. yes. um, their, their heavy body, I don't like thinning their heavy body that much. It, it just seems, it just doesn't seem to work as well. I just thought of something. Uh, did you, I didn't mean to jump on you. Did no, go you? ahead, go ahead. Well, I used to use the, um, I use the UC, the universal tinting colors, UTC, mm. bottles just of, you know, color. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you can, you can extend, you can put it in many different mediums. Um, I don't think you can put it in oil, but most water-based mediums you can mix it with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a actually you can. That's it, why it, they're they called universal it because they um, have mix the, it with oil. I, I guess I could say aptitude. That's why they're called universals. You can move, use them. They are pure pigment, pure liquid pigment, oh. which can be an additive to anything as long as it has a binder in it. Mm -hmm. Water base or oil base. So it's really a, a wonderful thing to use. There's a student um, in the adult ed, and she um, has a business called, I think, Earth Pigments. Uh, what's her name? Linda. And so she's. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So the, I. Linda. Linda. Yeah. I mean, I haven't used them, but I can see pure pigment and how that would extend. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm excited because I've got a couple mm -hmm. of five foot five feet by uh, two feet canvases that I'm mm. afraid to tackle. But oh, cool. Hey, hey, yeah. Now, Terry, are you, are you painting in oil or paint. acrylic? Acrylics. Okay. Yeah. You can also use things if like- If I'm not uh, mistaken, Graham has a line. Of acrylic, yeah, they do. Of gems. No, but of gems, of minerals. And um, Grinding? you can actually- Try to make some of your own if you can find any place um, that cuts stone because they're going to wind up having all sorts of things if you find the right place that they'd love to haul away and give you. And all you have to do is find a emulsifier with a binder in it. Mm -hmm. And so you could use your own pigments that way. Have you, have you done that? What kind of binders are do you have you used uh, like egg with tempera? But I haven't ever made my own. I've I've looked at like Leonardo yeah, I make a lot of paint. You do? Um, yeah, I I did. Do you, um, what do you bind it with? I did something. Well, I'm, I was going to tell you. Um, I did something okay. for some. I I did a whole series of um pretty much African symbolism. I did it quite a long time ago. And I would take liquid pigments or I would take powdered pigments, whatever I had. And mm -hmm. I did them as an experiment. And I told people, whether it was in class or people that saw the paintings finished, just take something as simple as Elmer's glue. Like we've done that in class, putting coffee grounds or cornmeal into Elmer's glue. So if you take mm -hmm. really good pigments and mix Elmer's glue, that's non-toxic mm -hmm. and it applies really well. And the only thing you have to be careful of is don't add water to it because if you do, then ultimately most of those things will mold. If you don't, then they're fine. But anything oh you can think of that would bind. Just think of it as in um, a relatable way, but not as paint. You know, th think about what te textures do I love? What glues do I love? Mm -hmm. What varnishes do I love? Just think of mm -hmm. whatever it is, and then you can run experiments and mix those things together. Kind of like the UTCs. You put it in whatever you've got that you're going to work yeah. with. Yeah. No, Jill, can you use things yeah, like... Yeah, worried me a little. Can, can you use like uh, gloss medium or matte medium as a, as a binder, or is that not thick enough? Uh, oh, no, they're, they're thick enough. Uh, the only thing is most of those, to me, still look plastic. Oh, okay. But, but try it. Maybe what you mix with it will not look that way in the end. I, I know I'm sometimes I bring things up that you've probably heard me say before, but um, I remember somebody coming into class and giving me this huge, what's it called? Mod 
Podge or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah Mod Podge. Right. And I had never purchased that. And a lot of collage artists use it. Mm -hmm. And um, so they let me have a sample of it. And I had coffee grounds with me. And I mixed that together with coffee grounds. I don't know if it ever, because I didn't do art with it. I just did samples for class. But it was really nice looking. And I don't know the longevity, but longevity is so important. Like when I heard today with um, Frankenthaler's uh, daughter, stepdaughter, I, I can't remember which it was, but said that she used stucco. A lot of those things do not hold on canvas. They're okay on a wall, but anything that moves and bends got to be real careful so if you're going to go for thick yes go ahead and use acrylic gel or use acrylic medium as long as it binds jill what if what if what if something looked really plasticky but you do a spray varnish on it one of the ones that takes to water would that give it a different finish that would be acceptable yeah. or the, um the the thing with to me you May, some of you might agree and others not, but to me, any acrylic varnish looks synthetic to me. It mm -hmm. just just looks plastic. Mm -hmm. And I remember years ago uh, when I did um, buildings, you know, large walls, and I would paint them little by little by little, different sealers would go get disconnect uh, discontinued because of proposition 65 and it was just such a heartbreak because i could never get that sealer to look the same with acrylic no matter how expensive it was or what company very difficult yeah it's never been the same that's true yeah i think i learned all my original things with oil finishes bow finishes or oil paints on walls. And then when they disallowed that, um, sometimes I've used them anyway, but really it, it uh, you can't use them on a big scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you never can never uh, guess ahead of time what they're gonna discontinue because it sure makes me scratch my head when I know magic markers that smell just horrendous and are toxic those are okay to keep on the market whereas lapage mm. glue do you remember it just made oh, out yeah. of horse hooves yeah. that that became illegal and it wasn't toxic so who knows but yeah. i always love. good to experiment because when, when we get to a certain point where we can't buy what we love then at least you have your own range of things you've tested and are hopefully um have longevity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was was uh lapage glue made illegal all over the place or just like in la or you know no. worldwide um, in the state of California, well the u.s anyway. but probably other states i i do know that sometimes people slip under the radar as it was if they uh order online mm. and uh but yeah, California is definitely big on oh, yeah. Proposition 65. But I also I tried to I tried to find some mucilage, and I I I googled everything and went to eBay. I could not find any anywhere. They've taken it off the market. Of LaPaz. Yeah. Really? Okay. Um, does anybody else remember there was another glue just about identical? I'm trying to think what that, what that was. Yeah, I'm not sure. What the fuck? But, but if you here. know of something that seems almost the same, try that because it might be fabulous. Mm hmm. I've got I've got some gambling pigment. Just pigment in, a, in bottles, and I've got what they I've got their PVA ground. This is when I was wor I was working with oil. I don't do much of that anymore. And um, the PVA ground is what they would use, like on a wood support as the first layer. And then they would, you know, after that you just put more oil ground down and away you go. But the PVA, their PVA ground, PVA is polyvinyl acetate, which is the same thing as. Um, um, 
Elmer, Elmer's glue. He was, I had to take him out. I missed half of this. I had to take him out. He had diarrhea on the lawn. Who did? Somebody needs to go on mute. Milo. Must be Lorraine or Barbara. Is that? We was being freaked out today. I understand. I mean, I just, you know, it's okay. All right. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Heard about how we treat someone's dog. Okay. Gene yeah. Nielsen, you've been very quiet. What what kind of painting do you do? And um, what did you think about the Frankenthal presentation? Oh, I loved it. And I'm, really discussion. I'm just I watching you. something that I've been waiting to watch. And I, you know, he was just, he wouldn't stop barking. He just wouldn't. Okay, whoever uh, has the I, dog I needs to go on mute. Yeah, sorry guys. All right, can you go on mute? All right, thanks. Yeah, yeah I'm so, everything's a mess here. I apologize. All right. Oh, Hi, really I think it's, when, it's Wendy, okay. Um, it's me, I, it's, everything's going, it's okay. okay. Good to see everybody, I love you all. Love you too, Wendy, take care. So Jean, continue. Oh, I'm, I'm really enjoying the discussion today because Good. I miss Bill's class, especially the first uh, hour when mm -hmm. she discussed the different artists. And right now I'm really not painting. My um, daughter and her family live with me. Ah. She's working from home mm -hmm. and the eight-year-old's on Zoom with his school and we have a four-year-old, so mm -hmm. not doing very much right now. Okay. Well, we're going to. But gonna you're be so doing... good, Jean. Is there any way you could do it in your car? You know, I have a big car. Remember my <laughs> big car? Right. <laughs> I could. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I could. I think you should, you should entertain that because when my children were young, I would always have something when I was waiting for them, like from guitar lessons or dance class. And I would always be working. I mean, granted, they weren't huge, but I had some of the most fun encounter with people too. Like somebody would walk by the car and if the window was open, they'd stick the head in and go, you need more green there. Or, you know, <laughs> something like that. You know, I never saw these people before, but it, you know, you might really consider that because you can move around and go and park in different places to get the lighting just right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm gonna encourage that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try that out. It's good to see you, Jill. Who oh, yeah. said that, though? Jean. Does Jean. Yes. Who did? Yes, Jean. Jill. Good to see oh, you. I thought it was. I thought it was somebody else. Said no. It's good to see you too, Jean. Yeah. I'm getting a yeah. lot of pain because I'm just in a parking lot. Oh dear. Good yeah, to see you. It's Terry. I couldn't use my tablet. It's Terry. So oh, it's we, ter now I can only see Jean right now on the screen. Uh, okay. Hi to both of you. Hi <laughs> to all of you. <laughs> so we, we, we do this every month. I just started this last month and we did Gerhard Richter. And today, obviously today was Helen Frankenthaler. And next month, I'm thinking about doing Mark Bradford. Um, and my, my drive on this actually stemmed from Jill's class because much like what Jean said, I really enjoyed the opening half hour to hour where we talked about a particular yeah. painter because it gave me the opportunity to learn more about who's doing what in the world and in, in, in the in the art history world of painting. So that was, and here's Kate Higgins. Hey, Kate. Hey, I totally forgot. I'm sorry. It I happens. Had, I had bee people here removing a bee swarm. Oh my God! I had yeah. to do that last year. It's it's terrible. I know. Yeah. I know. Well, so I'll try, let me just catch up. You can always call the bug farm. They're really good at removing bees, and then they relocate them. Yeah. Yeah, that's what these these people are doing. Oh, good, yeah. good. Yeah. So Great. I'm recording the discussion. So if you want to watch it later, Kate, you can. So okay. you know, we're, we're doing that, and um, and oh, I've that's also, really great that you're recording that. Yeah. Yeah. And that way, we you know people can go back if they haven't seen it. I'm going to post it at the Buena Ventura Art Association's web uh, YouTube channel. Okay, so you can go in there. I've also got a recording of last month's uh, artist abstract artist collective meeting. So if you want to go in there to watch that and see what was going on, 
and what the what the pieces look like, feel free. I'll I'll send all that information out, um, along with the links to the videos we saw today and other stuff that on Helen Frankenthal that you know that I came across. Hey. You're good at this. Oh, Mary Friedrich just had to leave. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to so how many people are to... still in, in the meeting right now? Because all I can see is myself, which I don't need to see, and then only one select person at a time. I've got ten, uh, there's now nine. We and from not okay. It's like five o'clock, people start to drop it starts to draw drop. Yeah, I think off it, it was up to uh what uh twelve fourteen. Yeah, or... we had like fourteen at one time. Oh, good, yeah. good. So, and I want to thank Jill for actually broadcasting this, this because Jill, Jill actually spread the word and I really appreciate that because um, I didn't have any contacts with um, the, you know, the folks that in my class. So Jill, thank you very much for that. And You're welcome. And I, I bet if you keep those names, although I sent them BCC in case they minded, uh, although they usually appreciate it, you can send your next thing with the same BCC, even though you probably won't be able to visually see it if you can figure out a way to do that. Yeah. And you probably have a bigger group. And being that I used to have a studio in Ventura and certainly one in Santa Barbara and, and like a year and a half, I think it was, that I had maybe two years, one in each city, which was completely exhausting. But I found that there is real beauty for the Santa Barbara people to experience the Ventura artists and vice versa. Because even though it's about 35 miles in separation on the highway, there's a vast difference in the artwork for the oh, yes. Yes. It reaches yeah. everybody. Yes. I totally agree. Totally agree. And, and that's, that's really what I really enjoy the most about our monthly collect, you know, abstract artists collective meeting is that it's the breadth of the work that we see. And I know that if the artists that, are, that, are, yes. that have been attending today from Santa Barbara will add to that and then create more diversity. And I think, and it's, a, it's just a great group. People are supportive. The feedback is, 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 is positive. It's done well, let's put it that way, because sometimes things don't work and we'll point those out, but we do it in a very generous manner. And I learned that from attending Jill Sadler's class how to do that. So um, I am abs I'm just absolutely over the moon on seeing all my old classmates from Jill's class. And I can't thank you enough, Jill, for spreading the word. Um, and continue. I'll keep you involved. You're welcome. And you I enjoy seeing all of you. Yeah. I live in the Bermuda Triangle now, which <laughs> translates to I never see anybody. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Terry, I'm really happy you from, you. Uh, from Judy's class. Terry, did you ever take a uh, class with Judy? Judy. Judy. No. Judy. No? Okay. Well, I with, recognize you from somewhere. So Judy Dornberg? Judy Dornberg? Oh, she used to be in some maybe, of our classes, Terry. Maybe that's. Do you remember? I was in Terry, a lot of you your took classes. Some classes <laughs> when Judy was in class. In, the, um, in room five? Yeah. No, I just know her as a friend, not much as a teacher, but we oh, okay. cross paths, I'm sure. <laughs> I just had lunch with her. But it's nice to have Zoom where we can actually. All oh, right. What did you learn? What well, was... It, it, was, get... it was interesting because um, some of the things that, that came up were um, some of them, I think, some some of the more obvious things were her her painting on unprimed canvas on the floor, you know, large pieces, and 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 I I drew the parallel to to Jackson Pollock, who she knew very she was good friends with Jackson Pollock, and was impressed with his work, and she took his basic method of painting on the floor and dripping paint to painting on the floor and pooling paint which I thought was genius. I mean, it really was. And when you look at a work, I mean, it just, you know, the colors are just magnificent. The other yes, we I talked like a little, the piece behind you. Yes, it is. That's it. That's right. That is one, I, of, the, that's I, one of my favorites. Yeah, I did mine too. And um, we talked a little bit about her relationship with Robert Motherwell. 
who is another famous art, you know, abstract artist. And um, I guess you'll have to watch the video. I will. I will, watch it. I will watch it. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about you because I'm like, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Because I, I knew you wanted to, to to be here. So, but so next month, um, like, like I said, I'm I'm thinking tentatively to do Mark Bradford, who is just an amazing, amazing artist. His his collage work is incredible, and he has an amazing story too as to how he came to art, um, and where he is today and what he's doing. And um, who? What? What's his name again? Mark Bradford. Okay. Bradford. He's Bradford. He's from you Los can, Angeles. You can see his. Uh, we talked about him in, in some of my classes related oh, yeah. to Art 21, if anybody knows those series. Yep. And um, I, I, love, I, I love his creativity because he got his inspiration to be an artist from working in his mother's beauty salon, I think in Watts. Yeah, if I remember correctly, either that or, or South some, LA, yeah. some of the permanent wave, you know, those real thin per permanent wave paper fell across the floor, and he had like this moment of just complete inspiration. He said, and he goes, "I could do something with those," mm -hmm. and now you know he is just so prolific as uh, mostly a uh, collage artist, but then he paints on them and they're, th mm -hmm. they're fabulous. And Just I mean, you, you, you want to talk big pieces? His piece at the Broad is amazing. It is huge. It's like 25 feet wide. He, and he also has something at the Smithsonian, one of the, one of the museums at the Smithsonian where he did, I can't believe he did this, Pickett's Charge from the Civil War. And it is, I, I don't know how, how long it, how long it totally is, but it's in this huge room and it's in the round and you just start on one end and you just walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. It's his, he's just a phenomenal artist. Absolutely phenomenal artist. And I know we have some collage artists that, that are part of the uh, abstract group. So I figured we'll give them some love next month and have Mark Bradford as, as the presentation. And I'm working on a schedule. I, I think, didn't he have work at Gray Space once? Mm. I think he had a show at Gray Space. Wasn't a one person. I think he he brought a few things. And what was curious to me is I don't know him. I mean, I I know uh, I know because of his exhibitions. That's how mm -hmm. I know him. But for some reason, he sent me an email one day, and all it says is "Don't stop." <laughs> I thought, okay. Okay, I won't. <laughs> so when you think of them, think don't stop if you're yeah. thinking of giving up. <laughs> oh yeah, his and there's an interview that I'll probably play because I think it's phenomenal with Anderson Cooper that tells his whole ah. story and shows his work. And he is, he just, I'm not a collage artist, but his work just blew me away. And, and, he, he didn't even go take art lessons until he was in his mid thirties. And, and now he's selling work. That's like multi-million dollar pieces of work. So yeah, he is. And it kind of goes back to Stuart's question. Is Stuart still there? Cause this is a good thing. If yeah, Stuart had to drop, Stuart. Stuart had to drop, but Dahlia Riley's here. Hi Dahlia. Glad you could join. Is Stuart still there? Because if, no, Stuart had to leave. What, what, what Stuart asked about was like, what makes something, you know, generate so much interest or so much business and it's people's perception of it. So if you have a large enough group of people that are seeing your artwork and perceiving it in a very positive way, I think it's just uh, call it kismet or whatever you want, then it becomes larger than life to the, the whole collective. Mm hmm All right. Does anyone else have something they'd like to bring up? And right. didn't I see Lynn on the screen for a fraction yep. of a second? Is she yep. there? Lynn Dow, she's not here any longer, but she was here. Okay, good. 
And I'm taking, I'm still, I started taking the, the Santa Barbara Community College course again on a Thursday with Laura Denny. And obviously much different method of teaching. Um, it's been helpful to me in a different sense, which is nice. And Lynn's part of that group, she's there. Is that online? Yeah, no, is it is, yeah. Online? Yeah, this is, this was, this is Jill's old class, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know Helen Santa Barbara City College. What's that, Kate? I said I know Helen Frankenthaler. Her one, she was famous for saying, "Break the rules." Oh yeah. She would, and she obviously and did. And that's what the Dalai Lama says. He says, "Learn <laughs> the rules so you can break them." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Good advice. You're you're muted, Dahlia. All right. Did you guys read the book, Ninth Street Women? Oh, I meant to bring that up. Thank you for doing that, Dahlia. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in the middle of it right now, and it is a phenomenal book. It what really is. is. It's, a ninth, it's called Ninth Street Women. I didn't, I didn't hear the, oh, Ninth Street. I didn't hear the name of the title of the book. What was that? It's Ninth Street Women. N-T-A, I mean, N-T-H. Okay, thank you. I mean, yes. Okay. Yeah, and she and, was on Ninth Street, right? Yep, for, in, in New York. Right? And it's 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 all part of the group. It's it's um, Frankenthaler, Krasner, De Kooning. Um, who else died? It is about uh, Joan Mitchell. Joan Mitchell. Yep. Yeah. And it's a great read. It's it's a big book, but it's a great read if you want to find out about the women of abstract expressionism. That's the book to do it. And I I'm it's loving a, it. It's a, it's a fabulous book to read on Audible. Oh yeah, good idea. It's a it's about forty hours of listening. Mm -hmm. But oh my it's, goodness, it's it's terrific, terrific narrator, and wonderful read. Mm -hmm. I agree. I've been reading it, and it's it's just yeah. You learn things all about how everything is interconnected in all of their lives and and what they did and. Um, Somebody mentioned, you know, when we were talking about how how, people, how some artists get are famous or become famous and some others don't. I think it's what's his name uh, Greenberg, um, the critic. Is it Clem Greenberg? Clem, was, yeah. Yeah, she was. She actually dated him for a while. Can you imagine? And he was. The, oh yeah, and he was the number one art critic in New York. So I mean. Talk about having, you know, having some weapons in your in your arsenal. Yeah. She certainly did. Is that and what then, women had to do back then? <laughs> exa yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes I, that doesn't bring luck. What? I was just saying with the Me Too movement, all the um, women that testified against Weinstein, you know, it's not always a good thing to intermingle <laughs> to an extreme <laughs> because people think if they get cozy with somebody, then they'll get famous and a very no. kind of a bad way to go just to do, you know, have friendships and just to get something out of it, which Frankenthaler did not do apparently and mm -hmm. it's just really remarkable yes that really is really remarkable not to mention yeah, marrying remember, Robert Motherwell I remember but. being an artist in San Francisco in the 60s and <laughs> and there weren't any women in the galleries and you honestly, right uh, and honestly folks very one of, few one of the things I intend to do in in this getting to know series is I want to give equal time to both male to to female artists, artists of color, uh, the artists of gender. I mean, Mark Bradford's an openly gay man. Though that's what I, I want to I want to kind of level the playing field a bit among you know. It's, I mean, it's it's pretty easy just to it's it it's like shooting fish in a barrel if I just put a bowl of famous men who've done something. Um, well, in the art community, gay men didn't really have much of a problem. I mean, looking no. at Warhol and so on, and even black men, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. but women, yeah. on the other hand, were not saleable. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yes. I think you might have heard that they told, she told the story, someone told the story in the videos, 
her most famous painting, which is Mountain and Sea, that right. that didn't sell. That right. she actually brought that back into her um, her studio, and, and she now had it's it, her most famous. Yeah, and she had it for sale for like a hundred bucks and couldn't sell it. Can you imagine that? Right. And yeah. now they're calling it genius. Yeah. Oh yeah. People people didn't recognize genius. I guess. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right. I think it's time to say goodbye. Okay. This is. Okay. Been Are you going to sing that? It's a very beautiful song. Thank you. Time to say goodbye. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the Thank tune. Thank you, you for getting me. this together and doing all of this. It, oh, it was my... really fun seeing all of you, and I'm. Yeah. I'm not kidding. It is like I'm living in the Bermuda Triangle yeah. with very mm -hmm. few uh, people in this situation so it's remarkably fun what are to you, be are together you, with all of you are you in well, carpinteria or something or where's the bermuda oh me no up, up in vandenberg yeah along, around Lampo. where the missiles get launched oh yeah. my brother is over there too i know what you mean it's a beautiful area Lampo, but mm. beautiful it is a little ways yeah my brother's there i didn't realize you were there now if i go visit i'll let i'll let you know okay. well jill Hi. You're the inspiration. Yeah, so I've only met one artist. You're the inspiration for me <laughs> doing this, okay? Because I, it's it's the what you, way you taught class and, and taught a little bit of art history that gave me the idea and the inspiration to get it done. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank no, you. this is great. Thank oh, you, thank you. Thank you. You're good. It's good at, stuff. Good it's so great though, to so. see all of you. Same here. It's, it's really <clears> funny. <throat> I just got a text message right now for, from an art critic. <laughs> we're all together talking about art. Wow. <laughs> we're all tuned in. Good there you luck. Are. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. No namby pamby. That's right. Uh, good luck. And okay. Stay connected. Thank Bye. you all. All righty. See you, folks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.